All right, man. Listen, man. Sketch Pad Podcast. We back, man. So we're gonna react to the Vex uh, top five moments of the fourth debate. Uh, Savage Mode. He went God level. Super Saiyan. You know what I'm saying? God level. Super Saiyan Vivek. That's what we call him on this channel. Super Saiyan Vivek. All right, man. So we'll be back, man. Let's get it. <laughs> Who raised you? Oh my god, this is so hard. Oh my god. That last bar was crazy. Oh my god. Uh, children are too young to make those type of choices for themselves. You know, that's why they have parents. Oh, eat each other. What? Yo, I can't, can't understand it neither. All right, man. Yeah, we back, man. So look, man, Vivek, Super Saiyan Vec. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get into what he got to say to these people, man, because Super Saiyan Vec ain't no joke. You know what I mean? He already yeah. went level. Let's go, Vivek. And I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is a woman who will send your kids to die so she can buy a bigger house. Oh, what? <laughs> you want somebody who's going to speak truth to power, then vote for somebody who's going to speak the truth to you. Why am I the only person on the stage, at least, who can say that January 6th now does look like it was an inside job? That the government lied to us for 20 years about Saudi Arabia's involvement in 9-11. That the great replacement theory is not some grand right-wing conspiracy theory, but a basic statement of the Democratic Party's platform. That the 2020 election was indeed stolen by big tech. That the 2016 election, the one that Trump won for sure, was also one that was stolen from him by the national security establishment <laughs> okay. that actually Thank put you. up the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that they knew was false. There's a reason why I'm the only person That'll on the it, stage sir. who can Thank say you. these things. That's what it's going to take, not people who are licking his boots one time and now Monday okay. morning quarterbacking and criticizing when it's convenient. Let me stop that. Oh, yo. Let me stop that right there. I, listen, I thought the last debate he was saying, <coughs> this one right here, that right there, you can tell that these people don't want this man to talk. You heard them. Okay, that's enough, sir. You know his name. Why are you calling him sir? <coughs> okay, that's enough, sir. This is what I mean. Mm -mm. That's... Mm -mm. Bro. Ain't nobody like this dude, man. Nah, man. This is crazy. Shao Kahn Vec. Let's go, Shao Kahn Vec. Let's go, man. Let's go, Shao Kahn Vec. Let's go. That was five. That was only five. Oh, man. That was only number five. This is a very personal issue to our family. I wanted to take actually a minute to recognize my wife who's here today. Badass surgeon. She did a bunch of cases with cancer survivors earlier today. Flew here to be not tonight. We'll be back at 7 a.m. in Columbus, Ohio tomorrow, taking care of those patients in the OR. And on the front lines of people who have actually not swallowed for years. And here's what's something that's awful that's happening in our healthcare system. They'll pay for anything like feeding tubes, doctors to be pill pushers, but for the procedures that can actually make these patients better, we have a broken healthcare system that doesn't pay for it. My wife, Apoorva, in many cases, does not get paid for those procedures. She does them anyway because it's the right thing to do. But that does not work system-wide. So here's the answer. We don't have a health care system in this country. We have a sick care system. We need to start having diverse insurance options in a competitive marketplace that cover actual health, preventative medicine, diet, exercise, lifestyle, and otherwise. And okay. here's how we deliver that end the antitrust exemptions for health insurance companies. That's where the competitive marketplace begins. Next that's crony capitalism, you. and that's the answer. Yeah, he, yeah he, he's dropping truth bombs right now. Yeah. This is crazy. That's crazy. 
let me let me explain something to y'all. This is a once in a lifetime generational person right here when it comes to politics. You're not gonna find nobody like this guy. Trump was like him, but he's much more intelligent on his feet. Trump is probably more business savvy. And then again, you never know because he was successful at business too. But this guy right here, I just don't understand how he wouldn't be the nominee. He's not playing. No. This guy is At not all. playing, and he's young. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, bro. Listen, man. Listen, bro. <laughs> I could just imagine his wife going to the, working in the hospital and knowing that her husband is Vivek. Mm -hmm. And they like, damn, your husband's about to be the president. Your husband's be the president. <laughs> you, yep. be, you go, you could be the first lady. <laughs> like, yep. That's crazy. <laughs> oh man. Shao Khan Vec, man. Super Saiyan Vec. Let's go. Foreign policy experience is not the same as foreign policy wisdom. I want everybody at home to know that I was the first person to say we need a reasonable peace deal in Ukraine. Now a lot of the neocons are quietly coming along to that position with the exceptions of Nikki Haley and Joe Biden who still support this, what I believe is pointless war in Ukraine. And I think those with foreign policy experience, one thing that Joe Biden and Nikki Haley have in common is that neither of them could even state for you three provinces in eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. Look at that. This is what I want people to understand. These people have, I mean, she has no idea what the hell the names of those provinces are, but she wants to send our sons and daughters and our troops and our military equipment to go fight it. So reject this myth that they've been selling you, that somebody had a cup of coffee stint at the UN and then makes eight million bucks after, has real foreign policy experience. It takes an outsider to see this through. Look at the blank expression. She doesn't know the names of the provinces. And there's a that are I know. The okay, I'm not. Yo, that's crazy. Yo, oh my god. Oh my god. Bro. Oh, listen, man. I'm, listen. Listen, man. I, I just want to just say this. She's done, yo. You see it on her face. That man is making her look really stupid. Ever since she said that about him, oh, you want to play this game? Oh, now I'm gonna really put the pressure on you now. You don't, you, you want to be the president, and you talk about you know foreign policy better than me, but you can't even name three providence in Ukraine that you want our sons and daughters to go die in. Yeah. What? Oh yeah, but God. she she want she she want to go send she she want to send her, her sons and daughters to go go and fight in that war, war but she want to go send everybody else's though. That's cr listen, man. This is crazy. I'll use this to just address a topic we didn't talk about tonight, but I think is one of the most important topics that needs to be discussed. That is this climate change agenda that is shackling this country like a set of handcuffs. I said it the first debate and I stand by it. The climate change agenda is a hoax because it has nothing to do with the climate. That's what we have to see. 98% reduction in the climate disaster related deaths in the last century. Eight times as many people are gonna die of cold temperatures this year than warm ones. Yet against that backdrop, there's an issue coming up in Iowa. It's core to Iowa farmers. I met Kim Junker, Kathy Stockdale, and other farmers who are about to have a carbon capture pipeline built across their land using eminent domain to do it. That's unconstitutional and it's wrong. And if you thought COVID was bad, what's coming with this climate agenda is far worse. We should not be bending the knee to this new religion. That is what it is. It is a substitute for a modern religion. We are flogging ourselves and losing our modern way of life, bowing to this new god okay. of climate, and that will end on my watch. Thank it's you, the most Ambassador Haley. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, th th this is the part that uh, people were talking to me about at work, the climate change part. I'm just going to say, if you don't know anything about Vivek, if you are a person 
who just watches the news, they're going to they're going to smear him. You have to watch this guy for yourself. Because a lot of people, especially when it comes to us black people, things fall on deaf ears because we are so used to listen to the establishment. Tell us what is what mm-hmm. we're lazy listeners. You know what I'm saying? We lay back on our couch, watch TV, turn on the news. Oh, what's going on in the news? Oh, this person is this. Oh, yeah, they right. That's what they said. That's true. Then you talk about Vivek. Man, don't bring that guy up. That guy is racist, bro. He's yeah. Where you hear that at? I was watching the news. They talked about it on the news. The same people saying that the news don't promote real stuff they for sure enough tell you that they heard it on the news <laughs> let man let's finish this john out this is crazy yeah that question or authenticity and i think that's deeper here we were just talking about the trans issue this is a symptom of a deeper cancer in american life identity politics this new religion that says your race your gender and your sexuality are your identity it is anti-american it is meritocratic, it's anti-meritocratic, and it is dividing this country to a breaking point. And I've spoken about this to the left. My books are all about this. I preach this to the left, but it's even worse when Republicans try to play the same game. We're talking about that trans issue. And Nikki Haley's campaign launch video sounded like a woke Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light ad talking about how she would kick in heels. At the first debate, she said that she can get this job done. That's what she said. After the third debate, when I criticized Ronna McDaniel after five failed years of leadership of this party and criticized Nikki for her corrupt foreign dealings as a military contractor, she said that I have a woman problem. Nikki, I don't have a woman problem. You have a corruption problem. And I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is a woman who will send your kids to die so she can buy a bigger house. This is the problem. Using identity politics. put up their puppet and I reject the use of identity politics in this party. It has been a cancer coming from the left and I'm sick and tired of the double standards the people of this country are too. Having two X chromosomes does not immunize okay, you from thank criticism. You. Thank you. That guy, man. Oh, that guy my. You can't put nobody in front of that dude. Like, you can't put nobody in front of that dude. He's unstoppable. You gotta, you, mm. nah, man. Nah, they gonna have to get him out of here. Like, they gotta get him out of here. The establishment hates that guy because they, they can't do nothing with him. He too smart. He he just in the he's in the position. He don't need nothing from none of y'all. He don't need none of your money. He don't even ask for your money. We donate is from the grassroots, but he don't get no donor money. He yo, they're gonna do everything in their power, and I'm talking about the Republican Party. To not get this guy, not to have this guy. They will pick her before they pick him. Because they know she'll make sure their pockets align. Him? Nah. He's he's going after them. You know what I'm saying? At least he appears to be doing that from right for right now. Because you know things change when you get in the power and you have to change certain ways and do certain things that you might not agree with. Because Yeah. The deep state is what it is. It's deep, and one person can't take it down. You need several to combat the machine. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. Throw a monkey wrench in it, but that machine somehow is still well oiled and still moving. Yeah. So I'm gonna say this guy right here, man. He's very dangerous to them. And that's both parties. I ain't even talking about just the, the Democratic Party. He's very dangerous to the Republican Party, too, because everybody on that stage is a Republican. And he smoked all of them and he called them up. That's a Republican he's talking to. She's a Republican. She ain't no Democrat. Yeah, no. She's corrupt. He literally said, yo, this is my party. They're corrupt. <laughs> Hey man, go ahead, bro. This is crazy. 
Shao Kahn Vec. Jeez. <laughs> Yo. Oh, man. If politics, if politics was a video game, Vivek will be the final boss. Because what he is doing has never, it hasn't, I'm not going to say never, but it has not been displayed at this level before. Like, you see, you see, you see glimpses of it from Trump, but the way Vivek does it, the way Vivek does it, the way he goes at him, is just crazy. It's crazy. Never have you had one person call out their own party. Never. I don't remember a last time somebody has done that. And he's doing it. He's doing it. Man, that guy, that guy is dangerous, man. Uh, I really, I, I really hope that, you know, that he could win. I really do because I think he's he, that the world needs. He's that reality check, whether people like it or not. He's the reality check. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that Vivek. There's a couple of reasons why I don't think that they're gonna nominate him. One of the major reasons why is because he's exposing everything. Like he has nothing to lose, mm-hmm. and all of those up, all those people up there, they playing nice because they have to. Him, he don't have to play nice. He can say whatever he want because they don't. He don't. He don't. He's not beholden to to no donors or nobody. He's a free man. Mm-hmm. He can't do nothing with him. You know what I'm saying? And if they if it came down to let's just say Trump got convicted. And now he can't run, which wouldn't happen because he still could run for president. There's another thing too, y'all gotta understand. If Trump goes to prison, he still could be the president. He could be the president from prison. People don't know that, but that's what it is. He literally could be the president from prison. You know what I'm saying? He can't get pardoned, I believe, on a state level. I believe in Georgia they have to have a committee. It is a committee or something like mm-hmm. that. The committee has to do it. The governor can't do it, but if it was another state, the governor can pardon him from state level. But Mm -hmm. when it comes to Georgia, it's a little bit different, I believe. I think it's a committee. But even if the case, if that's the case, he goes to prison, he could be the president from prison. Mm. That's what it is. But if they decide not to choose him, nine times out of ten, they're going to go with Excuse me. They're gonna go with Nikki Haley, or they're gonna go with Ron DeSantis. They're gonna go with either one, because the thing is, Vivek is too honest, and the deep state—that's both sides—they hate honesty. They have to. They need somebody that's gonna lie to the people. Vivek is Obama if Obama told the truth. You know what I'm saying? Obama lied about a lot of things, but he was very good at it. This guy is saying things that we all know is what it is. And they trying to say it's conspiracy theory. You know what I'm saying? The January 6th is a conspiracy theory when he said, well, the police did let them in. You didn't see the tapes? Because if you look at the tapes, the police are letting people in. The guy that, with the uh, the QAnon shaman dude with the, with the horns, he's out of prison. I'm hearing he's about to run for office. Run, be a politician. Hmm. Like, really? You know what I'm saying? Not to say he should be locked up. I'm just saying, like... So it just goes to show you the the, 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 the games that is being played. Either way, i put it to you like this. Um, What I would like to see, the dream team for me, would be... And this is me. I would say Vivek. I would say Trump, President, Vivek, Vice President, Tucker Carlson... Uh, 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 press secretary. That's my take. You know what I'm saying? That's what I believe should happen. But either way, 
I agree with you. I agree with you 110%, man. Um, he's incredible. I, I really, I, I really, really, like I said before earlier, I really, really hope that, you know, he could win or, 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 or at least get the VP. I really, really hope so. You know, but we you know with politics, you never know. No, you never know. The nominee, just to believe, they're gonna ask him probably to be the VP. It could be anybody. They need that guy. They don't want to face that guy. They don't want to face that guy in the second term. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Because if they have to face him in the second term, they're gonna lose. He ain't debating with that dude. He's smart now. Imagine in, in four years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Either way, man. Vec, holla at us, man. We try to get you on the show. You know what time it is. Sketchpad. See y'all. Peace. Bye.